Hi, everyone. Um, in case you didn't get a chance to watch yesterday, I recorded a live stream of me building a random meal planner. And in case you don't want to spend an hour and 21 minutes watching all of that, I created a template and I'm making this super short. Uh, I'm going to think I'm going to go through it in less than five minutes showing you how you can use it, too. So just a quick overview of how it works. Um, basically, your recipes will be added into here in you know if you want to change these categories you can kind of customize them up a bit and i'm happy to you know sort of show you how to do that but hopefully you can kind of pick through like uh when i reference this i'm also referencing this and then that's probably what i need to change so um if if you're you're doing that um that's awesome but uh if you want to just keep with it as is my categories are generic quick meatless and new recipes to try in sides so if you're okay sticking with that and like my labels for slow cooker and type of meat, then you should be pretty good to go. So what you'll need to do is actually first, I'm going to go ahead and make this a template. Um, no, hang on. So I need to make it public first. Yes, make for public, make template. All right. So this is a template now and I'm going to share the link to this. But what you'll do is you'll basically create a board from this template and then um, You'll basically need to go to automation and actually set up these rules on your board because I can't copy and paste these rules over where they're just automatically enabled. And also, depending on your Trello plan, you may not have access to all of these rules. So um, what I'm going to encourage you to do, I've done all the hard work for you here. It's like right here. This is what the rule is. You go to rules, just click create new rule and then look for this trigger. When a label is added to a card, move the card. If you have any struggles at all with that let me know um if you're not on a premium trello plan and you're not using custom fields some of these rules will not work um you can tell they won't work because this rule in specific won't work if you see anything using percent in them which to be honest i think this is the only rule that's actually using them if you don't have that the workaround is you just won't be able to use that return label and if something happens like you add a meal on deck and you're actually not interested in it um rather than being able to add a label you'll just have to manually drag it back to where it came from so it's not too terrible um you'll just have to you know try to remember which category you put it in but you know that shouldn't be like i said too too terrible um so these are all the different rules you'll need to apply like i said i hope i've made it pretty clear um and if you want a detailed understanding of sort of how each of these rules work and a walkthrough of how to apply them let me know and i'll put it together um because there's got to be that would take more than five minutes but and I technically do that in the hour and a half version, but like, I don't know that you all want to watch that. So if someone's like, can you give me a 15 minute version that walks through each of these rules? Let me know if one person says they want that. I'm happy to do that. So just comment on here and let me know. Um, but yeah, you'll have two sets of automated rules. You'll have a set of board buttons and then you'll have um, a set of due date commands. And not all of these are required if, if you don't want to use them, but to be able to use this out of the box, like once you enable all of those things, um, what you'll be able to do is add your recipes in here. Important thing, all of your ingredients need to be in the checklist. So you can do whatever you want in the description. You can attach whatever else you want to it, but you need to have a list of the ingredients in the description because that's how it's going to know how to generate your shopping list. So um, I'm going to swap back over here to my board just so you can see how it works. Um, I don't have the butler rules enabled on that other board, but if I did, um, notice this looks really, really similar. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is let's say, and, and this obviously makes more sense when you have more meals kind of out in the open, but I have different buttons. The only thing that's like automated completely, like, um, I guess without buttons like there's a few things but a lot of this is, is based off of buttons so one it will automatically generate like pick three meals for you from each of your lists um or sorry one meal from each of your lists give you like a total of three meals you can change those numbers if you're like comfortable with butler all you have to do is um you'll see on these board buttons where it says like pick you know move one randomly selected pick weeks rule is move one randomly selected card from each list you can change that to two you can change that to however many you want so hopefully if you've like ever used butler before you you should be able to kind of figure out like how to customize these rules if you want to change anything but if you have any questions definitely let me know um but yeah so the way it works is as long as your ingredients are like that you'll have kind of these here you can pick pick a week's meals and it'll randomly grab 
um, different meals over from quick, generic, and meatless. Um, and then I think it might grab a side too. I can't remember if I set it up to do that or not. Um, I don't think I did. So I just hold to do that. And let's say I'm feeling adventurous this week and I want to try something new. I don't have anything under new in this example, but if I clicked this button, it would randomly pick a new meal. If I pick pick a side, it'll randomly pick a new side. Pick a quick meal, it'll randomly pick something for there. So hopefully you see this is the one that generates three meals, one from each of these main lists. And then this is how to pick a random meal from any of those. So once you have meals on deck, I initially had that once something was added over there, it generated the shopping list, but I wanted to give you a chance to see, do you want these or not? Let's say I actually don't want to do this slow cooker chili. Um, so I'm going to add the label called return. And basically what it will do is send that straight back over to quick and I can generate another uh, quick meal. So I can pick a quick meal. Um, if it picks chili, that will be coincidental because there's only four meals in there. So hopefully you have a bigger bank for it to, to really be helpful. Um, I have a bunch over here that I need to normalize the data for, but whatever. So let's say we've got that. Um, once you're like, okay, I'm good with these meals, um, you can just add the label that says approved. And when you do that, it will start generating a shopping list for you. So you can see that sort of over on the side. Um, you to do labels approved and um so it's going to start doing that for all of these and pretty much what that rule is doing is it's just going to look at what is in those checklists and then moving them over here um it is applying labels to them uh based on i was able to figure out how to make a butler rule that says if it like contains multiple things how to uh you know give it some sort of trigger so basically if it contains, you know, certain things, I will label it as meat or produce or dairy. You can see that some of it still needs a little bit of finessing because tomato labels it as produce, but obviously tomato sauce isn't. Um, so yeah, so we need to work on that. But um, yeah, it, it's roughly there. And yeah, there's your shopping list. And if you want to be able to sort it, I haven't tried this one live, but you should be able to click, yep, sort shopping list and it's going to sort your cards by it's still going through them I think but it'll sort them out by meat produce and dairy um should be doing that maybe it's not going to do all of them just yet but um should be able to configure that role fairly easily because it's just basically a, a sort rule so it's um I'll show you real quick board button Sort the cards in the list, shopping list by purple, blue, and red ascending labels. So anyways, so I might kind of debug why that's not entirely moving them all together because I see it sort of is, but I don't know why it stopped there. But close enough, hopefully. Um, and there's your list. And you can kind of go through and say, oh, I've already got olive oil at home. Don't need that. Don't need this, that, whatever. And then you have your shopping list. And as you're shopping, you can archive them or you can just kind of go through them. And then when you get back home, archive all the cards in this list. Um, when you're done with the meal for the week, you can just hit return and it'll send it back to where it belongs. So that's a quick walkthrough on how this works. If you um, if you have any questions or anything, let me know. I think I'm also gonna make a thing that once you add the approved label, it does the thing and then removes it. So um, be on the lookout for that, but um. Yeah, good luck. Uh, comment in here uh, or hit me up if you have any questions about how to use this.